Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next episode of the Direct Selling Executives Forum Women in Leadership series. I'm more excited than ever to have our special guest here with you today. If you're new to this series, you haven't yet subscribed on Spotify or watching on our YouTube channel, do click subscribe. If you haven't joined the discussion that's active, very active in the LinkedIn forum, go to directsellingexecutivesforum.com, which will forward you to LinkedIn, or just look up the DSEF, Direct Selling Executives Forum on LinkedIn, apply to join. It's free invite-only community for direct selling executives to be sharing best practices and winning today. So I want to introduce our special guest today. We were talking about topics and how to properly launch in social media, and I know of, knew of no one better than to invite uh, Mrs. Sam Hind to join us here today on the call. Sam, thank you so much for being here today. Ah, oh, it's such a pleasure. I'm excited. Well, gang, let me give you a little bit of background on Sam. So Sam is an award-winning speaker, social media educator, podcast creator, digital marketing specialist who works exclusively in the direct selling industry. Together with her husband, Greg, they run their company, Oxano Global. And over the past nine years, their workshops, social media challenges, and industry curated courses have helped more than 173,000 direct sellers globally take their business to the next level of growth. That is a, that's a lot of people, Sam. That's awesome. It is <laughs> a lot of people that's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> it is this impact that led them to be named the 2021 Collaborator of the Year Award from the DSA of Australia and the best in social media by DSA USA in 2023. She's been invited to speak numerous times at Australian and USA DSA social media events on social media trends, strategies, as well as direct selling industry uh, trends and research to help DSA member companies stay ahead of the curve and learn how to best educate their field in the current times for maximum impact and industry growth. Sam and Greg's passion is to upskill direct sellers to elevate their courage and amplify their confidence so they can step into the direct selling business model potential, right? They do this primarily in partnership with members, companies, ensuring the training they provide is the outcome oriented and compliant. As a supplier member to both Australian and USA DSA, they choose to work only on direct selling industry, positioning them as the very best and relevant social media trainers in the industry. To put it simply, they have their fingers on the pulse. Amen. Well, so excited to have you here today, Sam. You know, when, when we come to DSEF events, these were created and, and traditionally we have all executives from uh, direct selling companies just speaking about their own thoughts. And we've opened up this season in our Women in Leadership series to invite uh, vendors and the folks behind the scenes that are supporting our space to share their thoughts on topics that are relevant to everyone. And one of the big mm -hmm. ones uh, we talk about all the time is launching well on social media. We all have this picture of yeah. the super excited, super passionate person saying all the wrong things and vomiting all over their friends. And then <laughs> none of their friends want to answer their text messages or phone calls because they just yeah. did it all wrong. And, and, ah, oh, you know, executive teams everywhere are saying, man, how do we do this thing right? And so the, the first question, these questions get gathered and put in by different folks in, in the, in the yeah. forum. So they, they wanted to ask like, where do we start? What's the first steps that the corporate team needs to take as they prepare to create a framework for their members to powerfully launch in social media? It's, it's a really big question. And, you know, the thing is you're dealing with a volunteer sales force. So at the end of the day, you know, we've got to make it number one, easy for them to understand, but we also mm -hmm. need to make it fun. And, and the challenge we've got is depending on what direct selling company you're with, if you're selling healthcare products um, uh, or, or anything that is going to have a, a, a compliance attached to it, as far as, you know, in Australia, we've got the TGA uh, over in the US, you've got the FDA. And so, you know, you of course got all these restrictions you have to be careful of. And if, if we're not um, making sure that the field understand what those restrictions are, then, you know, of course, as a company, we can get in a lot of trouble. The field can get in trouble. It becomes this real issue. And so how do you get people to be both effective on social media, stay compliant? And the bit that I think is most important for corporate is branding, protecting your brand. You know, the marketing team spends so much time and money as any company does mm -hmm. on effectively branding yourself. So, you know, how do you protect that when you've got a volunteer sales force? You know, a staff member, mm -hmm. you can tell them this is what you you can do and you can reprimand them when they get it wrong. 
but it's not quite the same in the direct selling industry. So there's a few key things that we know we're going to be really mindful of when you know, launching effectively and getting that sales force to promote the brand. And I would, I would always say, start the way you intend to finish. You know, I see a lot of companies will, not everyone, uh, you know, some of them do this really well, but some of them will start with, let's just look at the next thing that we need to do. Okay. We need to worry about compliance. or we need to worry about how to get them on social media, but you've got to look way ahead of that because once you get the first element of training in place, then what? And once you create bad habits or once bad habits create themselves and you recognize them, then you've got, it's much harder to undo them. So mm. it's better to look ahead and go, where do we want them um, to end up in the long run on social media? The mm. other thing that's a real problem, of course, is, you know, with a lot of the field, you know, we've got a reputation in this industry. Let's just call it out. All right. This industry, unfortunately, you know, over many years, um, you know, people have done the wrong thing and it's not necessarily because they intentionally do the wrong thing. It's because they don't know any other way. And for us, this has been our core focus. It's what we're really passionate about helping change is that reputation of the industry, but that has to start with the field. And that comes with good quality practices. Unfortunately, there are still some some practices out there that I would call the churn and burn practices on social media. It's about the quick wins, the short-term gain, long-term pain for the company and in many cases, the field. And I know it's easy sometimes to overlook these practices if they're getting results initially. Problem is they create for your big, big problem down the track in many mm. ways. Um, you know, we've seen entire companies lose their entire reputation because they've had a few leaders who have got ahead and done really, really well by utilizing some uh, of these churn and burn techniques or even, you know, again, and I, I want to be really careful with this because bringing in external speakers, I mean, this is our livelihood. This is what we do. And I'm really passionate about bringing in other sources of knowledge, but because, you know, you're expanding that knowledge for the field as well as your corporate team, but you've got to vet it and you've got to be really careful mm -hmm. because there are some messages out there that aren't healthy. Um, and they are about getting wins really quickly. They aren't necessarily about long-term mm. gains. So I think mm. the biggest thing I would say is, you know, don't let trends get in the way of a really good strategy and start the way you intend to finish. So look at the big mm. picture. Um, I suppose, and that, that's a really long answer, but the, the last part to that I would say is you, you really focus on what they can do. So when you tell them all the things they shouldn't be doing, you end up with this, well, what can I do? Um, mm. Or they breach the rules because they they just think, well, I, I don't really know any other way, so I'm just going to find a way mm. to get away with it. So we don't want them to go down this path. Mm -hmm. What path should we get them to go down? And give them the the can do's for every can't do, give them two can do's. So yeah, yeah. I, I would say that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to to launching effectively and getting them on the right track. Yeah. What I love about what you just shared, Sam, is I, I have a big problem with that too. When we just, when we come out as a corporate team and just say, all right, these are all the things you can't do. And then it's just their, their ignorance, you know, of just showing up ignorance on fire saying, well, you know, what, what can I do? You know, and they're, they're just trying to create curiosity amongst people in their life. And it's, they're doing whatever they think they need to do to create curiosity. And sometimes people use shock and awe in ways that they, they shouldn't, you know, we, we should get to some specifics in this story. You know, the, the next question that the, the panel had was that what elements are musts for creating a strategy for new team members to launch on social media? So what, what are some of the real things that should be in that plan? Yeah, I think <clears throat> again, there's a lot of chasing of the trends. And so, you know, the first thing people always want to know is, you know, what's, how do I use TikTok? How do I use Instagram? How do I do reels? And I will always stop. Or how do I run ads? You know, the, the first thing I'm going to say to anybody in that case is, have you got a good quality foundation? Have you got the strategy down? So the first element is always going to be, where are they going? What's their objective and what's their goal? And helping them set a good business goal first that motivates and inspires them because where people go really wrong with social media is they show up for the sake of it. So they don't know what outcome they want to get, which means it makes it very hard to track and measure if it's performing. And it can be a massive waste of time. Um, there are so many other elements of things that they should be doing in their business as well. And we all know the importance of one-to-one -one connection. Social mm -hmm. media is a tool. 
it's not everything. And we were in San Diego recently at Social Media Marketing World and, and we got to catch up with Mari Smith. And, um, you know, if you don't know who Mari Smith is, she's dubbed the queen of Facebook. And uh, she actually spoke for the DSA Social Media Day um, uh, last year. But one of the things I love about what Mari Smith says is, and, and she's here to teach social media, that's her thing. But she made it really clear. Technology is moving at warp speed, but humans haven't changed all that much. And so, you <laughs> know, good. I just thought good. Shit, it was like a mic drop moment. I was like, guys, it's so true. <laughs> We're dealing with human beings here. Uh-huh. So the first thing is, you know, what's the goal and objective and helping the field work that out. Then the next step is getting them to figure out their strategy. How am I going to achieve that on social media? Mm. And this goes for corporate teams as well. You know, I often see mm-hmm. marketing teams, again, chasing the shiny object instead of going, hang on a minute, you know, mm-hmm. and and we, you know, prior to teaching the field, we actually worked, we don't talk about this a lot, but one of the things that I did was I used to work with marketing teams for direct selling companies as an advisor to help their marketing team get their social media um, up and running effectively. This was sort of when social media was still relatively new to a lot of direct selling companies. And we actually hired entire marketing teams for a couple of the the bigger um, companies globally and and got them in place. And it was really funny because they come in as amazing creatives. And, you know, in a lot of cases, they've got a marketing background, but not necessarily a digital or social media marketing background. And what they'll do is they'll go straight for the shiny object. They'll go straight for the creative fun thing that is trending, but I'll have to pull them back and go, hang on, guys, stop. What's your objective? What do you want to achieve with this? And how are we going to lay out a strategy before we go creating the cool creative um, element? Let's not even look at creating posts yet. Let's not even look at designing the page yet. First, what do we want to achieve? Where are we going? We need to have a direction here. How are we going to track and measure that? And then what strategy are we going to lay out to do it? And it's exactly the same for the field. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it does have to be something we think about before we start creating content because if you create content without a strategy and an objective, you are just throwing stuff at the wall and waiting for something to stick. And I tell yeah. you what, a lot of stuff's not going to stick if you do that. <laughs> oh, I love that thought. You know, context is so important. We see this all the time. Like we talk about, you talk about how humans haven't changed, but technology does. I always kind of laugh in the beginning. You know, this would be 13, 14 years ago. I put together a uh, social media basics course for a bunch of our corporate clients and the, first, the the thing we'd say on stage all the time was that people think of and back time back then it was only Facebook as the 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 piece we talk about, but they would think about it in the wrong mm-hmm. context. Like uh, we used to explain that Facebook was more of a backyard barbecue when you're just chatting with people and meeting people one on one, and folks who would treat it like a billboard would be so upset because it's not a billboard, and you know it would be yeah. equivalent to showing up to a backyard barbecue and printing on your T-shirt like special opportunity to earn more and then a phone number and just walking yeah. around totally frustrated at the party because no one is pulling out their phone and calling the number on your t-shirt. And and yet that that old story from over a decade ago is still true today is that so many times yeah. we hear, oh, wow, look at what's going on in Tiki Talk and look what's going on over here in Instagram. And and yeah. people think, <laughs> oh, yeah. man, I, I need to I need to be relevant. And in trying to be relevant, yeah. they they're not. And, and so, so that, no, that brings us this. So oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's so true. You know, like Greg yeah. and I will will often use that same analogy and talking about, well, you know, would you at a barbecue just go into the barbecue and every conversation you have is about the product and the business, product and the business, <laughs> product and the business. You know, you wouldn't do it in real life. Why are you doing it on social media? And that brings me to something that's really important to remember here. Yeah. It's called social media for a reason. <laughs> It's not marketing. It's not broadcasting. It's not a billboard. And the one thing to remember about this is, you know, old school marketing, which we're all trained in, whether we know it or not, because we've seen it since we were babies, is one way marketing. And that's broadcasting. It's telling people what you want them to hear in order to get them to do what you want them to do. But this new world, which isn't so new anymore, is two way. It's social. And we forget that you know, you wouldn't behave like that if you were at a barbecue, if you were having a coffee with your perfect customer, you wouldn't have a two-way conversation. You wouldn't just sit there and, and you know, broadcast and spit in their face as you're telling them everything they need to hear. You would get them to get involved in the conversation. And, and that's, you know, so critically important here to remember is, and, you know, 
I guess probably one of the other elements that I'd throw in there, and I'm, I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit here is um, because of all of that, because it's social media, mm. because it's so interpersonal, we also need to be um, so laser focused and clear on who our audience is. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there is a process to go through with this, but the thing you've got to remember is every social media platform that you use has got an algorithm in play. And whether you know what that is and how it works, it doesn't matter. The, the thing you do need to know is it is filtering every piece of content and deciding who gets to see that based on their interest, their demographic, you know, their uh, family situation, um, you know, their dislikes, all of that stuff is coming into play. So this means that every piece of content you as a corporate team or your field are putting out there is getting filtered by this and decide and it's deciding who to show it to. Now, if that mm -hmm. algorithm already knows all this information about them, then it goes without saying you need to as well, because otherwise your stuff is just simply not going to get seen. I actually had a mm -hmm. conversation with someone, another trainer a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I got really frustrated. We were both speaking at this direct selling company. And, and so we'd been put into the same apartment in the hotel. We, we, we know each other, we're good friends. And so we're chatting away and, you know, her job is to get people taking action in their business um, in, in other areas. So, you know, having the conversations, all those sorts of things. My job, of course, is social media. Mm -hmm. And I was having this conversation with her and she said, no, I've been telling people that don't bother working out who your ideal customer is. Cause she said, I think that people just procrastinate over it. I said, but if they don't know who they're talking to, how are they going to create the right content? They're just going to end up wasting their time. She said, no, nah, I think it's a waste of time because some of them don't know who it is and, and they're never going to know who it is. And, and it's a, just a procrastination technique. And we got into this big argument because for me, it is such a waste of time yeah. to show up on social media and talk to who, you, who are you yeah. talking to? What, what messaging yeah. are you delivering? Well, that's such a good point. You, you know, the moment of freedom, I know decades ago I had in direct selling was when I realized that everybody wasn't my customer. Like it's really yeah. freeing to know that like every human who walks the, the earth is not my customer. It's only the specific people where my product or my opportunity solve a need for them. And that's, yeah. that's free. And, and it allows you to make better decisions. You know, what you were just sharing feeds mm. right into uh, what the panel was asking next. They, they asked, that's a, the pitfall question. I love this. It's like, what are the, what are the pitfalls you've seen? I mean, you've been invited into so many conversations and just over, even yeah. the last year, um, what, what are the pitfalls you've seen that you'd encourage other corporate teams to avoid? Yeah, I, I think, oh gosh, there's, there's so many. Um, I think the first one is not having a clear message. Um, you yeah. know, again, if you have a corporate team where you haven't sort of come together and, and you've got different people coming in and giving different messaging, and um, that can get really confusing. The other pitfall is actually not giving the field enough support. They need clear, concise direction. And you'll be dealing with all different sorts of skill sets. You'll be dealing with people. You know, whenever we go in to do trainings and we do a lot of challenges. So whilst we might speak at co conferences and events, we'll often deliver trainings because we want to be really practical here and we want to make sure that People aren't just learning at an event, they're actually implementing and, and practically using that knowledge. So we do a lot of challenges with corporate companies. And one of the things that we find every time, and a company will come to us and say, our field is different. <laughs> they're different to everybody else's mm -hmm. because we've got, you know, a lot of beginners and and then we've got people at the other end as well. And that's so normal because you're dealing with people from all different walks of life. This does mean you got to deliver the same messaging, but in ways that are easy to, to understand for different skill sets. And mm. yeah, and that be, can become a challenge because knowing the information and teaching it are two very different skill sets. Being able to communicate how, it's one of the reasons that we're here is simply because that in itself can be really hard. And it, man, does it take a lot of patience sometimes <laughs> because it's repetitive. Yeah, And this is the... Again, another pitfall, I told you there are lots, there really are, but the, there's a fear to repeat because the companies will often think, I've already said that. I don't want, you know, I don't want to, I want to move on to the next thing. And so they, they move on to the shiny next thing, but they haven't drilled in the basics enough. So how to set up a business page, how to use one effectively, the importance of a business page, how to use a personal profile effectively and compliantly. By the way, Ben, I don't know if I said this earlier, I don't think I did. 
compliance isn't just direct selling and your company compliance. It's Mm -hmm. also compliance to the platforms you're using. And one of the things that we know right now is Meta are really, and, and TikTok, I mean, look at TikTok in the US, they're cracking down on this industry because of the misuse of their platforms and they've got every right to do it. So if we want that to change, which we do, then we need to make sure the field are also using the platforms the right way. And and one of the things I hear a little bit and it, it gets, sends shivers down my spine when I do is, oh, I know that's against the rules, but lots of people do that. Um, So, you know, and they get away with it. So I'm going to do it. You know, the, the mentality that I'm going to sell on my personal profile, I'm going to hound and hassle my family and friends. I'm going to inbox people I've never spoken to before. I haven't spoken to for 10 years because someone else does that and it works really well for their business. Um, I'm going to use a different word because I know that this word isn't correct, but I'm going to mean the same thing. And I'm going to try and, you know, as soon as you hear anyone say, I, I'm going to beat the algorithm, or I'm going to teach you to beat the algorithm, a red flag should go up because mm-hmm. we're talking about the most sophisticated piece of technology in existence here. You do stuff with like a, this. With a lot of engineers on their team. <laughs> they're going to oh find you. Oh my goodness. They're yeah. not stupid guys. <laughs> they're not idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just, we've got to be so careful. And so, yeah, look, it's really easy to go for that short-term win because it's working right yeah, now. Sure. Just think what happens when it doesn't work anymore. And then what are you going to do? You're better yeah. off finding a way that is compliant, that is effective. And, you know, it's, it's so funny because building relationships on social media is the key to all of this. For, for, you know, in any industry, for any business. And, you know, that can look like a number of different things. But at the end of the day, we know, and I feel like I repeat this a lot, but people buy from those they like, know, and trust, right? Sure. They don't buy from companies because they're the biggest and they're the best. They may eventually, but initially they have to trust them. They have to like them and they've got to know them for that to be the case. People think that building the relationship and establishing that trust, you know, takes longer and it's the long game and I just want some wins right now. Guys, in all honesty, it, it's not longer. It's it's actually in many cases the quicker way to do things, but it's definitely the the more successful way to do things and establishes a much more effective uh, strategy and, and plan long-term to grow. There's, there's so many parts to this. I, you've got me on my favorite subject, but look, the uh, <laughs> focus on the long game, I would say, and it, you'll, you'll be surprised at, at how much more effective it is short term. You know, I love that thought because I, I've said that all the time. So many times we'll see people making decisions that are just going to bring them right back where they are three months later mm. on executive teams always. And it's like, do you yeah. ever want to be in this spot again? I don't. I know you don't. <laughs> like, this isn't comfortable. Mm. And we want to have that uncomfortableness when we're growing and expanding yeah. and doing good things, not uncomfortableness because we're suffering right. the pain of our own bad short-term decisions again and again in life. Yeah. And so I love that thought because uh, it, it, it is true. These platforms will do whatever they want. And if If you're not going to act in compliance with them, they'll figure it out eventually. Any of those strategies are not going to work long-term. We've seen that time and again. And and then what happens when you bet the farm on a strategy that's no longer relevant in three months? Now you got to retrain everyone. You got to explain why your leadership wasn't correct. And you just lose integrity at the end of the day. You do. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's there's one other the practice, probably the the biggest one I see in this industry that I think is actually pulls all of those things together. And and I see this happening really often and it's really dangerous. You know, often they'll be looking at people in the field going, who's doing what, what's working, what's not working, what do we pull from that? What do we use? What do we teach? And I want to be really clear, when you take a leader who's doing really well on social media and you'll have a percentage of those, so you'll have, I'm going to throw it out there, probably 80 to 85% of your field will be beginners. They'll be the people who are, you know, they haven't cracked social media, they don't use it effectively. Then you kind of got the middle ground people and then you have maybe between two and 5% of your field that smash it out on social media. And this is where the danger comes in. I see a lot of people taking that two to 5% and putting them in front of everybody else and saying, here is what you need to do. And what happens is you get one person who's worked out their recipe and that's what this is. It's each individual, just like they would at the barbecue, will have their way of communicating and connecting with people and, and getting to know people. Every single distributor has their own target audience, their own voice, their own personality, their own messaging, and therefore probably their own platforms they need to be using to to work with all of those things. 
When you put one person in front of everybody and that person says, here's how I do it. Here's how I've been successful. Everybody follow me. Several things happen. The first is any bad practices. And I'm going to be really honest here. A lot of those people, not all of them by a long way. And I don't want to generalize here, but I know a lot of those people are using bad practices or have used bad practices that beat the algorithm, that cheat the system and their short-term practices. So the first thing is vet those practices and make sure that they're okay. But the second thing is what they do is they stand up and say, hey, everybody, here's how you do social media and they share their own recipe. And what happens is everybody else, that 85% of people who are sort of at the at the beginning of their social media journey mm-hmm. that haven't cracked their own code yet, their own messaging, sit there and go, okay, do exactly what this person says and it doesn't work for them. And they think, oh, well, that means there's something wrong with me. And they do two things. They either start mimicking the other person because they think I've got to be more like you and less like me to be successful or they give up and they don't do anything. They don't show on social media at all because that method was never meant to work for everyone. It was that person's method. So you've got to be really careful putting leaders in front of people to share their methodology because it can cause more problems than it's worth. I've seen that so many times that one funny example I've seen again and again is when you have like the stay at home mom who's killing it on social media because she's talking about how to help stay at home moms killed on social media. And then you get a guy trying, this is a good example, gang. Just think about this. You get a guy trying to emulate her and like, that's not it. He's not a stay at home dad trying to help other dads be stay at home dad. Like it's funny when you say it out loud, but you got to hear what Sam saying is, it's not authentic and it's not who they are. And social media kind of weeds out right away. Like all of their friends who know them when they're copying that other person are like, what happened to Joanna? Like what happened to Tommy? Like yeah. it doesn't feel they like They know them. it's transparent, yep. right? You, like yeah. people are not silly. They know it's not you. You know, yeah. If you show up and you start dancing um, on TikTok <laughs> or do reels where you're, you know, miming to, you know, singing and people are like, you've never done anything like that before. Why are you doing that now? If it doesn't feel comfortable and congruent, now I'm not suggesting don't push your comfort zone, but if it doesn't feel congruent to you and who you are, don't do it. It's not part of your personality. I don't care how many trends there are. You will never see me dancing on TikTok (laughs) unless it's because my kids have done something like teach me a crazy dance and I'm thinking I'm just going to kind of put this out there to show people that I can't dance. I am yeah. not going to do it because someone tells me that it's trending and other people are getting results from it. I admire those that are great at that, that that do get um, you know great results from it. But I have a different skill set, a different personality, and I need to show up congruently to that. And yeah. you know, so does everybody else. So yeah, you've got to ask yourself: Is this congruent to me? Mm-hmm. Is this who I am? And again, I'm going to be clear. I I really believe people do need to push their comfort zone. So it's not about staying inside that mm-hmm. comfort zone, but it is about being true to who you are. Well, Sam, we only got time for one more question. So I'm going to grab the last one from the panel. Um, and, and this is the one for the, I call it the burnt out direct selling executives question, because we do get initiative overload in this space. And so yeah. we always have that one cynical guy or gal in the room who's saying, okay, well, if there's only one new practice, right, that my team is bandwidth to deploy, what are we going to do? Like, what do you suggest we do? Ooh. We're going to pick one. You know who that person is who asked that question and they asked it. So what would you say to them? I, I know that's a weird one, but go for it. I'm going to say consistency. I, I know that that's mm. not a, a, it is a practice. As much as I've been saying, don't go for the shiny new thing know what the next thing is. So, you know, always as a team, as a corporate team, you need to be looking ahead. So I would say, mm-hmm. I was going to say reels and the what's coming next, but mm-hmm. just thinking about that person on the panel, you know, and I know that person right now because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I get, I'm, I see you. Um, <laughs> uh, look, I'm going to say consistency. You've got to be consistent with your messaging. You have to be consistent with showing up. And the best way to learn what does and doesn't work is just by being consistent. You're going to work it out. Yeah. Showing up, being consistent, repetition. You know, we've, we've touched base on this previous other shows gang, but the idea of having a weekly communication plan isn't new to any of us when it comes to, we're going to email the customers on this day. We're going to email the reps on this day. We're going to send a text message to the reps on that day about the call. We're going to send a push notification on this day. And that same structure, many of you use in communicating to your tribe. 
um, needs to be done for how you release, whether you're modeling appropriate behavior in social media from the stuff Sam's talked about or new training in social media, you, you need to work that into that weekly calendar gang of where it's actually happening. When she says consistency, I want you to hear that. It means you have to keep showing up because just like your children um, didn't get it the first time you told them how something was supposed to work in the home or to do it, you, you got to not, uh, the big note, Sam said it a few times, don't be afraid to repeat yourself. And gosh, yeah. some of the best owners I've gotten to work with for over a decade in this space who are still growing their group, still doing great stuff in the direct selling yeah. space. And some of you are watching this right now. You are so dang consistent in your message. You never give up on the basics and walking people through what's possible. So Sam, this was a, yeah. just a total treat uh, to have you on here today. If anyone wants to find you, meet you, what, what website should they go to today? Uh, look, we're everywhere. They can go to uh, www.oxano, which is A-U-X-A-N-F-N-L-E-O.global. That is our website. Uh, but I, we can also be found uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, we can be found on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. <laughs> you can find us anywhere. So I would suggest, yeah, locate our website or, of course, you can go to LinkedIn and, and connect with me there. And I'd love to say hi. And, and gang, just so you know, uh, Sam also runs a intriguing podcast. And so if you haven't subscribed to hers as well, I would invite you to, I had the opportunity to speak on it last year. I know that you'll learn a lot from being plugged into people who are doing real stuff in the space. Uh, for those of you that have watched and enjoyed it, whether you're on the YouTube channel or on Spotify, we do invite you to join the conversation on LinkedIn. That's where everything happens, gang. As, as we talked about social networks and audiences, but I love LinkedIn because everyone's there to do business. Like no one's turning <laughs> else there to like, what can I do to grow my business? What can, who can I network with? People are pretty forward. It's like going to an actual networking event versus a backyard's barbecue where people are hanging out wanting to tell you about their kids. Well, I so think it's, it's where you and I met, place. Ben, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, met, we met on LinkedIn as well. And so, so if you haven't participated yet in the DSCF group on LinkedIn, do apply, fill out the survey and join. Uh, you won't regret Reddit. There's a ton of resources on the inside and you never know who you're going to meet. I hear all kinds of stories all the time from the members and I'm just grateful to be there. So thank you so much, Sam, for joining us so early, your time uh, out there in, in Oceana. And uh, we very much so appreciate you and excited that you're coming to USA soon uh, here in June out at yes, the DSA events. So, yep, if anyone's out in Scottsdale, please say, please say hi uh, to Sam when she's in town. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Awesome. All right, Thanks, you got everyone. it. Bye for now. Bye.